everyone, it's Kylie from Sam Altoona. Um, today we're going to be learning about Piet Mondrian and minimalism, which is pretty cool. Uh, basically what minimalism is, is a style or technique that is characterized by extreme spareness or simplicity. So what I'm going to do is while we wait for more people to come onto the live, I'm going to switch it to the notes for you to take a look at, okay? There we go. And then keep in mind, today we want to be using um, yellow, red, and blue. We're going to be focusing on primary colors, okay? Sorry, just getting my iPad set up. I have it right beside my notebook um, to keep an eye on things if I need um, a reference. Or say I need to look and try to manage comments. I do that on there as well. And I also look at notes as well of things I like to say. Um, I, I like to be prepared. I'm pretty, pretty organized. I like to think. Um, but anyways, I think we're going to get started here. Um, basically, again, what I had said already, uh, we're going to be uh, focusing on Piet Mondrian, and we're going to be focusing on minimalism. Uh, and as it says here, minimalism is a style or technique that is characterized by extreme spareness and simplicity. Um, we're going to be using red, yellow, and blue, which are the primary colors. And basically what primary colors are, are colors that you can mix to make a full spectrum of color. Um, as a reference, I have the color wheel right here. Uh, so if you look at the color wheel, what you see is you have yellow, red, and blue there. And the colors in between are the colors that they can make when mixed together. So if you have blue and yellow mixed, you get green. If you have red and um, red and yellow mixed, you get orange, and if you have red and blue mixed, you can get purple. Um, that way you can have a little bit more of an understanding of what primary colors can do. Um, so, I'm going to show you a few examples of what I've made so far. Um, that way you have an idea of what this lesson is going to look like. So, we're just going to be doing little tiny pieces that are inspired by um, Mondrian's work. Basically, what these focus to do is to combine primary colors and whites and blacks to try to aim for almost a balance, at least in what you think is a balance. Um, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Basically, today, I want to focus on making sure we have at least seven squares or rectangles in order to um, create this piece. Uh, I'm going to be creating a new one, not one that's exactly like this. And then here's the second one that I have, that I did. This one's a little bit smaller and it has a bit more um, shapes in it. That way I could experiment more. It's pretty fun trying to figure out where you want to put the colors in it. And I really like the mixture of red, blue, and yellow um, positioned differently and whenever they're positioned near each other. I try whenever I'm making this to keep it from having the same color right beside each other. So just make sure you're focusing on that for today, okay? So let me get a new piece of paper. Sorry, I'm trying not to hit the camera. There we go. So what you're gonna want to start out for this, you're gonna want either a spare piece of paper with a straight edge or a ruler in order to start. You're going to also want an eraser, and you're going to want a pencil. Um, after these ones, we're going to be using markers in order to create these. So, what I generally start doing, I start with the straight edge, and I try to get it straight to the edge of the sketchbook as well. So, you start by drawing your straight line. You can make it as big or as small as you want. Um, 
I'm gonna go for a little bit bigger and try to use a little bit more of the page today. Um, I like to try to do that because it, it, it takes up the page. You always wanna take up the most of whatever space you're using when you're creating art or else it just makes the piece feel like it's kind of empty. A lot of the time too, after I'm done doing projects like this, if I only use a section of the page where I don't go all the way to the edge, afterwards I like to cut the borders and that way I can have the piece and kind of customize it a little bit more and make it look more full. You can always do that afterwards too. There we go. I think I'm gonna make it a little longer. So you wanna make the big rectangle first, that way you can put the small rectangles and squares inside of it. I feel like that makes it easier to create it as opposed to trying to just create those squares and rectangles without, um, like without a reference to how big you want it. But you can always do it differently if you would like to. This is just generally how I feel is the easiest way to make it. There we go. And then I try to decide when I'm creating this, I try to decide if I want to have a big one or not. Sometimes I like to split it in the middle or sometimes I like to make one big one, like one big like uh, rectangle in the corners. I, I feel like it can help you get a little bit more smaller shapes if you do it almost halfway and then keep doing it halfway or if you use a big one, you have to try to figure out a way to make shapes um, so that the colors won't repeat right beside each other so that you won't have a red and a red beside each other. So I think I'm actually gonna do a smaller square to start out with and test that out. Try something new. So I'm gonna just do this a little bit quickly, I think. Let's try to, I'm going to do this. And then as you're going through, you kind of want to try to keep it so that you have your eye moving through the piece, through colors and through shapes. And that's what I always try to keep in mind. Um, it helps with uh, composition, which is the placement of what you're working with inside your piece. There we go. I'm going to do that. reason you want the eraser is say you have something that you placed that you don't like you can always erase it and go back to it I'm also going to use the eraser be again because I'm gonna go back through and I'm gonna draw over all of this with marker and then color it with another marker like um, I'm gonna use like a little liner or you could use a pen if you want just be careful because depending on what kind of markers you use it can bleed but I'm going to go through and make this outline that's in graphite black and then do the markers inside of it. And again, while you're making your composition, please make sure that you have at least seven rectangles or squares because it'll, keep, it'll give it a little bit more interest to look at. And plus it'll be a little bit more fun because it's actually really relaxing to make a piece like this because once you have all of your, um, all of your squares and rectangles made, it's really relaxing to try to figure out how you want to color them in with the colors you have. I try my best to keep the lines even as I'm drawing them, but if it's like a little bit wonky, that's okay. These are purely to have fun and to challenge yourself to place colors the way you would like to see them.
I like to also go through and in the bigger ones I kind of like to split them in half continuously to try to get smaller and smaller shapes that way you can play around with it more I generally if I'm doing a square or a larger rectangle I like to split it in half and then split it in half one more time to leave that shape and then I, if I have like a longer a longer rectangle I like to try to have a little bit of blank space here like space that doesn't have a line in it so you have a line here and then you don't have any lines in the direct middle and then you have the line towards the edge of this little square and also towards the edge of this one I feel like sometimes that can make for a little bit more fun while you're doing it there we go so I th think this is about where I want my piece to be um, and feel free to add or subtract squares as you go um, it's all about how much fun you have while making it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with the marker now um, the black marker and do the outlines really quick if you guys have any questions by the way feel free to leave them below um, I'll try to answer them as much as I can there we go and I'm only doing a really quick small line because I'll go over the black one more time when I'm finished I just want to make sure I don't have the graphite because like the um, the regular pencil because it'll smudge really bad whenever you go over with marker um, I always hate that a lot so that's why I generally like to do a black outline and then go back in and do another one And since this is the first time I'm going to be doing the black line, I always make it a little bit sloppier because I'll be fixing that up at the end anyways. If you, like, if you want to have it a little bit sloppy, that's perfectly fine. A big reason I always like to have borders before I cut down anything I make after I'm done with it is because if your marker or your pen's having problems, it's always really easy to test it out in the corner then and see if you can make it flow a little bit more. I think this marker is starting to dry out, which makes me sad because I love these things. Um, so I'm probably going to have to buy a new one soon, actually. There we go. And I always turn my sketchbook the ways that I can make it work a little bit easier for my wrist. If I'm sitting at an easel like I am now, it al I always like to move around the canvas or the paper I have. And sometimes it also helps to do that because if you look at something while it's upside down, you can see like it almost makes it a completely different thing, at least to me. And plus you can also look for, um, say if you're drawing like you're drawing a person or dog and you're trying to look for everything to be even, it can help you see where you have mistakes. There we go. Also, I always feel like I draw straight lines if I go downwards a little bit more. Um, I don't really, like, sometimes I'll go up a little bit whenever I'm drawing, for, like, up as in this kind of emotion. Um, but for the most part, I like to go downwards. I always think it's a little bit easier um, to go towards yourself than away. But everyone's a little bit different, too. I also feel like it's not as much strain on your wrist. We're almost done with the outlines. And then I'm gonna erase all of that graphite that's under there. It also smudged a little bit um, because I didn't lift up my hand enough. 
and you can see where it's like starting to smudge and get everywhere. I'm a bit messy when I make art. Are you guys messy? There we go. I think that's pretty good. I always try to erase as much as possible when there's a lot of graphite involved because if not, again, it'll smudge your markers or say you're like, if you're using um, ink, like other ink, like I feel like it smudges there too. Um, it's always really good for paintings though. If you're making a painting and you have pencil underneath it a little bit, I feel like it really helps you get where everything's at. There we go. I think that's good enough. There we go. I think we got it. So I'm going to start going in. I just generally like to pick one of the colors I'm using. And again, we're using red, blue, and yellow. Um, I like to just go in and pick um, just one of those colors. And I usually start in the corners somewhere. I actually think I'm going to start with this corner. When you guys are making these um, after today too, like feel free to go through, and if you wanna test out different colors um, on your own at home, feel free to like make it with some of your favorite colors. You could use like teal, pink, um, or you could even use um, some of the colors that red and yellow and blue mixed together. You could use like green, orange, and purple and test that out and see if you like that. I'm gonna do this. And then again, as you're coloring, try to make sure that you're not putting the same color directly beside each other. There we go. If you have white beside each other, like the color of the paper, that's okay. Just not any of the like colors you're using to color with. Kind of. I'm gonna do this. There we go. And then make sure to leave a comment and show what you guys have done um, below. It'll like it's always really a fun to see everyone else's pieces that they've made. I think I'm gonna make this one red. If you go outside the lines a little bit, that's okay. Um, if you're going back in again with black at the end, like I do, it's all right to overlap a little bit because you're, you're gonna fix that at the end. To be honest, I have always been a messy colorer, actually, um, which is kind of ironic because you would think someone that's artistic um, would always want to color inside the lines. I've always been really bad at staying inside the lines. Like, I always go out a very tiny bit, no matter what I do. Um, I think it's because I always like to color really fast, and I always like to fill up more stuff when I'm making it, um, as quickly as I can, so I always make a huge mess. I also, yep, I was going to say I'm surprised I don't have any marker on my hands, but I actually have a ton of marker already on my hands, so I didn't even notice. <laughs> do you guys get messy hands when you do art? There we go. That one's not too bad. Oh. 
there we go. And let's do So whenever I'm whenever I'm coloring these kind of pieces, I always try to pay attention to what colors I use the most and what squares. So this is just more of a personal preference. So since I used red in a really huge square, I'm going to try to use more yellow and blues in different places for right now to try to get that in the piece as much as I can. And that way I try to have almost an even balance of each, at least to my mind. Like I, I probably make it really unbalanced actually, but I always think it's kind of fun to do that. And plus you can, you can let your mind wander a little bit to, to think about like what you're doing. And it almost becomes a little bit automatic. You, you kind of just do it right away. And even if you do accidentally put the wrong colors beside each other, that's okay. Um, little happy accidents happen all the time. I think that's Bob Ross quote there. Yeah, I kind of like that. I'm gonna actually do. I think I'm gonna do red here. Actually, I was thinking of doing white there, but I feel like I have too much white everywhere. Because you do want to leave some of these blank and without color, but you don't want to do have too many of them that are gonna be blank. I'm almost done with coloring mine, I think. Yeah, there we go. So I'm just trying to think it out a little bit on where I want to color. Um, I think I'm actually going to do red down here. Because since I ignored the red a little bit, it almost disappeared. There we go. Luckily today it's actually been pretty quiet. The fire alarm at least isn't going off for the video this time. markers drying out really bad. I should have tested it one more time. There we go. I do like this color a lot though. Um, for reds anyways. I'm gonna do this here. And then say you feel like that you, you feel like you don't have enough um, breaks in certain places, feel free to go through 
and break them up a little bit. You can always go back through and fix it up at however you want if you're not fully happy with it. So I'm, I'm gonna do a few things really quick because I kinda wish I had a little bit more everywhere. And then I'm gonna do this here. Sorry, I'm kind of talking to myself a little bit there. Oh. I think I'm gonna test that out and see how that goes. Maybe I just need to let this marker sit down for a sec. There we go. So I kind of want to put. I'm not letting the marker dry fast like long enough um so sometimes if you draw an outline and you don't let it dry fast enough it can actually smear still even if it says it's able to withstand the marker and let's add oh I do like that a lot better though a little bit of red have all three of the colors right next to each other There we go. I actually really like that a lot better. There we go. So next, what I'm going to start doing, um, I'm going to go through with a thicker marker, um, a thicker black marker, and I'm going to start outlining the, um, the outlines one more time because I always like to make fix them up a little bit and try to make them a little bit more, a little bit more even. I kind of start wherever, um, but if you don't like that, feel free to start um, at a corner. That's always okay. So I'm just gonna start at this corner. Let me know if I'm moving the notebook around too much. I have a really big habit of continuously moving around um, notebooks and papers and stuff when I'm working on them. And if you want to make the black line thicker or thinner, you can. And this is an optional step. If you don't feel like you want to go back through and make thicker black lines, you don't have to. I just like to. I'm only going to do this one small corner here on the video before I let you guys go. And then I'll probably finish this on my own after the video is done a little bit. I actually have really enjoyed making these. Even though I only showed two examples, I think I've probably actually made... I've probably made four or five of these now. They're really relaxing. I like that you can customize them however you want to. I want a 
little too far on that one. You can always fix it by making the line a little bit thicker, but don't do that. Don't get in the habit of doing that too often because then you just continuously add and add and add um, until you think it's perfect. I I used to do that all the time and screw up my drawings. I used, I still love to draw. I do it a lot. But I used to draw mostly with graphite and that's it. I used to draw with graphite when I was in high school and I didn't really utilize the eraser to lighten it up. And I used to make these really dark drawings of people. I'm going to do it this way. And what this extra step here does, it helps separate the colors a little bit more and give them each their own space that you could, like, they have their own separation. There we go. And I'm just going to do this little bit and then I will let you guys go. So again, whenever you guys are done with your pieces, make sure to post them in the comments or share them to our page. We love to see the art and I think we would like to try to share it to our page. Um, to everyone that follows us, it would be really cool to feature some of your artwork um, that you make following these classes. And then also feel free if you guys really like these classes and you really enjoy the Southern, Muse Southern Alleghenies Museum of Art, um, feel free to donate to us. Uh, you don't have to, but it always helps us keep these kind of programs going. Um, I'll put a link to where you can donate in the comments and feel free to check back and look at that anytime you want. Um, again, feel free to go through and finish this on your own time. If you guys use different colors than red, yellow, and blue um, when you do this again at home, please share it with us. We would love to see it. But thank you guys. I hope you have a great day. Um, I will see you next time. Our next class with Neil Young is going to be this Thursday at 2. Bye!